Ships Company, uh, ten. Hup. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to historic Charleston, South Carolina, in the commissioning of United States ship Ralph Johnson. I am Commander Casey Mann, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. Before our ceremony begins, please silence your cell phones. We would like to thank the Low Country Singers for their amazing performance this morning. Please give them a round of applause. <clears throat> thank you. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS Ralph Johnson. The ship before you was christened in Pascagoula, Mississippi on April 2nd, 2016. Today, she is complete, and this crew is proud to serve on the newest destroyer in the United States Navy. Our crew is dedicated to carrying out the courageous legacy handed down to us by her namesake, Private First Class Ralph Henry Johnson, a United States Marine. To quote PFC Johnson's posthumous Medal of Honor citation, Suddenly, a hand grenade landed in the three-man fighting hole occupied by Private First Class Johnson and two fellow Marines. Realizing the inherent danger to his comrades, he shouted a warning and unhesitatingly hurled himself upon the explosive device. When the grenade exploded, Private First Class Johnson absorbed the tremendous impact of the blast and was killed instantly. In that same spirit of selfless sacrifice and devotion, this ship will sail the oceans and will stand vigilant against those who would threaten democracy and freedom. This crew is honored to serve in the ship which bears his name and honors his legacy. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hull to fully alive warship. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship alive. In just a few moments, the Parents Island Marine Corps Band will render honors to the Honorable Tim Scott. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, presentation of colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Commander Don Beadog, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, Command Chaplain, Marine Corps Air Station, Miramar, California. Reverend Eugene Collins, Sr., Pastor, Shiloh Mes African Methodist Episcopal Church, Charleston, South Carolina. Commander Scott Williams, United States Navy, DDG 51 Class Program Manager's Representative, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Gulf Coast. Private First Class Alex Colvin, Texas Pete teammate of Private First Class Ralph Johnson. Captain Taylor Scardin, United States Navy, retired, Chairman, USS Ralph Johnson Commissioning Committee. Mr. James Sheridan, Vice President and General Manager, Lockheed Martin Rotary Mission Systems. Captain Casey Moten, United States Navy, DDG 51 Class Program Manager. Rear Admiral Jesse Wilson, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Surface Forces, Atlantic. Mr. Brian Cusius, President, Ingalls Shipbuilding, and Executive Vice President, Huntington Ingalls Industries. Rear Admiral William Galinas, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Ships. Vice Admiral Thomas Moore, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command. The Honorable James Gertz, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Mrs. Helen Richards, sister of Private First Class Ralph Johnson. The Honorable John Tecklenburg, Mayor, City of Charleston. General Robert Neller, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. The Honorable Mark Sanford, United States Representative, South Carolina's First District. The Honorable Tom Rice, United States Representative, South Carolina's 7th District. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. George Ann McRaven, our ship sponsor, is escorted today by Command Master Chief Stephen Quick. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Tim Scott, United States Senator, State of South Carolina, escorted today by Commander Jason Patterson, United States Navy, Ralph Johnson's prospective commanding officer.
Ladies and gentlemen, honorables to the Honorable Tim Scott. Platform hand salute. Platform, ready, two. Advance the colors. Platform and salute. Retire the colors. Platform, ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend Collins will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today acknowledging your presence and your power from on high. We adore and magnify your holy name, for you are worthy of the praise. 
We ask you for guidance and wisdom as we live and move and have our being. We thank you, God, for the life and the legacy of PFC Ralph Johnson. We thank you for his family and their love, their commitment, and the values they instilled in him while he was growing up in Charleston. But most of all, God, we thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that PFC Rav Johnson paid on the battlefield in Vietnam. Your word tells us in John 15 and 13, greater love has no man in this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. PFC Johnson laid down his life for his friends by placing his body over a grenade to save their lives. God, we thank you for the commitment and the sacrifice of our military personnel and the role they play for freedom, not only here at home, but around the world. As we commission the USS Ralph Johnson today, we pray for your blessings upon this beautiful ship and the men and women who will serve on her for the cause of freedom around the world. This we ask in his name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Reverend Collins. We'd like to thank the Paris Island Marine Corps Band, the Citadel Cadet Choir, Navy Brig Charleston, and the Navy Region Mid-Atlantic Saluting Battery for their support this morning. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, Parade, Rest, Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable John Tecklenburg. Admiral Moore, General Neller, Admiral Galinas, Admiral Wilson, Senator Scott, Representative Sanford and Rice, Commander Patterson, Miss Helen, Secretary Gertz, Mrs. McRaven, our sponsor, and our other Medal Award recipient who's present with us today, General James Livingston. Servicemen and women, family and friends of Private First Class Ralph Johnson, distinguished guests, and fellow Charlestonians, it is a great honor to welcome you here today as we commission this remarkable new fighting ship into the United States Navy and remember the extraordinary man for whom it is named. Charleston native, we say here, he's a, he's a been here. U.S. Marine Corps Private First Class, Hen Ralph Henry Johnson. As Reverend Collins quoted, greater love hath no, ma greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Scripture tells us this. In words so simple and so true, we hear their echo across the vastness of human history and in the deepest recesses of the human heart. Words that Ralph Johnson chose to live out to their very last syllable on that early morning hour on March the 5th of 1968. The story of Ralph Johnson's heroism is recorded in the Medal of Honor citation he received after his sacrifice on April 20th, 1970. We remember it now, faithful to his memory and faithful to the cause and to the country for which he gave his life. It was during Operation Rock, a four-day reconnaissance mission deep in enemy territory that Private First Class Johnson and his comrades in the 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines, found themselves under attack by a pl platoon-sized enemy force. As the battle raged, a grenade landed in the fighting hole he shared with his fellow Marines. And that was when 19-year-old Private First Class Ralph Henry Johnson performed the selfless act of valor for which he will never be forgotten. Without hesitation and without thought of his own safety, Ralph threw himself on the grenade, taking the full force of the explosion. 
in that terrible moment, Ralph Johnson laid down his life for his friends in our country. And in every moment since, we have been moved by his sacrifice and by the sacrifice his family and friends and fellow servicemen and women continue to make to this day. As a Charlestonian, I'm proud to walk the streets that Ralph Johnson walked and proud to tell his story. As mayor, I'm proud to serve a city that could produce such an extraordinary man. And as an American, I'm proud of the courageous men and women who carry our nation's values around the world on ships like this one, knowing, knowing always that they may be asked to make that same sacrifice that Ralph Johnson made 50 years ago. We thank you for your service. To all those gathered here today for this remarkable occasion, welcome. And to the men and women of the USS Ralph Johnson, on behalf of all the citizens of Charleston, we thank you. You honor us by your presence today and your service to our nation. We wish you Godspeed and calm seas in the days ahead. And Commander Patterson, if you don't mind coming forward, I noticed that you don't have many flags here on the ship, so I brought for you to fly and to keep with the USS Ralph Johnson a City of Charleston flag to add to your, your connection. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Mayor Tecklenburg. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Cusius. Our distinguished guest, my fellow shipbuilders, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. You know, I am certainly honored to be here today in Charleston, representing the thousands of hardworking men and women of shipbuilding who built this ship, and 29 of her sister Arleigh Burke class destroyers that preceded her in the fleet. You know, as I look upon Ralph Johnson, I marvel at what a phenomenal asset this ship is to our nation and to the Navy, truly one of the most powerful and advanced warships in the world. It's a privilege to be part of bringing this great ship to service to our country and to honor our ship's namesake, which you've already heard a short while ago. But the ship we commissioned today honors Marine Corps Private First Class Ralph Johnson, Charleston's native son who was awarded the Medal of Honor for his heroic actions in Vietnam. Upon seeing a grenade land in his fighting position, he immediately shielded his fellow Marines from the blast by his own body, knowing it would probably be the end of his life. His actions saved not only his dearest comrades, but really his entire reconnaissance squad. It's with great gratitude and respect that we honor him today in the commissioning of this great ship. You know, we like to think that there's a little bit of Ralph Johnson's spirit and devotion in each one of our shipbuilders who pour their hearts and souls in every ship they build. And the DDG-114 is no exception. Thousands of dedicated shipbuilders, riggers and fitters and welders, planners, engineers, and many others have poured tens of thousands of hours transforming raw material and equipment into the ship our Navy commissions today. Our mission at Ingalls is clear. Build the best ships, period. For the Navy, for the Marines, for the Coast Guard, for America. Our shipbuilders are indeed a national asset who support the defense of our nation and freedom across the globe. You know, our national heroes, the men and women who will sail this great ship in protection of our country and our freedom, have earned and deserve nothing less than America's best. Several of these outstanding shipbuilders are with us here today. I would ask that the English shipbuilders with us please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Commander Patterson, you and your team may know us as the builders of your ship, but you should know we're also among your biggest supporters, and we deeply appreciate the sacrifice and service to our country. On behalf of nearly 12,000 employees at Ingalls, congratulations to Commander Patterson, his officers, and his crew members. 
I'm grateful to be here with this historic event. May God bless America, this ship, and all who serve in her. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cusius. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Thomas Moore. Good morning, everybody. Senator Scott, Representative Sanford, Representative Rice, General Neller, Secretary Gertz, Mayor Tecklenburg, our ship sponsor, Mrs. George Ann McRaven, and Alma McRaven, distinguished platform guests, fellow flag officers and general officers, Commander Patterson, crew of the soon-to-be USS Ralph Johnson, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the Chief of Naval Operations, it is fantastic to be in a wonderful Navy town, beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Would also like to extend a very special welcome to Private First Class Ralph Johnson's sister, Helen Richards, and his platoon mate, Alice Colvin, you honor us with your presence here today. It's great to be here for the commission of the Navy's 64th Arleigh Burke class destroyer. Named after the legendary Admiral Arleigh 31 Knot Burke, these magnificent warships provide an unmatched combination of striking power and ballistic missile defense. Admiral Burke, who fought in 22 separate engagements during World War II and rose to become the Chief of Naval Operations once famously said, after reflecting on an American naval victory over the Japanese in World War II, that the difference between a good officer and a poor one is about 10 seconds. And so I can imagine if he were standing here today, he would be nodding approvingly that the Secretary of the Navy has chosen to name a ship of this class after someone who epitomized and matched his toughness and decisiveness in battle in Private First Class Ralph Johnson. As the commander of the Naval Sea Systems Command, I am privileged and very humbled to represent the thousands of men and women, a collective Navy Marine Corps industry team that is laser focused on delivering the most capable warships possible to the young men and women today who have volunteered to serve our great Navy, Marine Corps, and nation. This team includes the men and women of the Naval Sea Systems Command, our proud shipbuilders and Ingalls shipbuilders, and the hundreds of suppliers from around our country who have put millions of hours into the building of this great ship. This morning, through one of the most time-honored traditions of the United States Naval Service, we come together to welcome our newest destroyer, the USS Ralph Johnson, into the world's greatest Navy. With the most up-to-date command and control and combat systems at sea, the USS Ralph Johnson will be the most powerful warship of its size in the world, and it will carry with it for the next 40 years the time-honored values of honor, courage, and commitment exemplified by Private First Class Ralph Johnson. And today, most importantly, Commander Patterson, you and your crew stand ready. This team has built you a great ship. Mrs. McRaven has instilled her with an indomitable and gracious spirit. You have built a solid team that will take the fight to the enemy and carry with her the name and spirit of Private First Class Ralph Johnson wherever she may sail. As you prepare to meet the unknown challenges ahead, please know that you sail forward with the hopes and prayers of a grateful nation. You are ready and you will make a difference. Swift, silent, deadly. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Admiral Moore. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mark Sanford. We are indeed here to celebrate the, the Navy's newest instrument of strength and resolve and justice. And in and of itself, uh, the 64th Arleigh Burke class destroyer is a big deal. But that is the tip of the iceberg of what we celebrate. Because we're here to commend the men and women who will bring this ship to life. We're here to wish well and Godspeed to Commander Patterson and to Master Chief Quick their duties in doing so, and we're here to thank every sailor, soldier, airman, and marine for their respective service in defending our nation. But as has already been mentioned above all else, we're here to honor the life and the legacy of Private First Class Ralph Johnson. People have come from far and wide to, to be here as I look at this crowd, and so whether that's you, General Livingston, on the front corner, or Mayor Riley, 
or you, General Neller, or Admiral McRaven, and so many other dignitaries that are gathered, we are here indeed to celebrate his life and his legacy. To Helen Richards and the Johnson family, we are humbled by your family's sacrifice. To the Texas Pete Recon team, and to platoon leader Cleve McClary, and I see members of the platoon right here on the front row, we're here to say thank you for the way that you honored his life while he lived, and to say thank you as well for the fact that many of you are alive because he lived. And I think that that is the larger point. I think that in the wake of anything that is honorable and noble and sacrificial, we're all left to look at our own lives and say, how might I then live? And I know that from this day forward, part of my answer to that question will be more like Ralph Johnson. He was from us, but above us. We all have feet of clay. We all come from humble origins. And yet the challenge of our lives is how do we live more of the parable of talents in making more of the time that we have so that we indeed honor the legacy of Ralph Johnson. He lived a life of love. As has been quoted several times now, the Bible indeed says that there is no greater love than one who would lay down his life for his friend. That's what he did. And it challenges every one of us to ask that proverbial question, if he did that, then how do I love a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a fellow enlistee, a fellow officer, or just the ornery neighbor down the street just a, 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 a touch better? And finally, he lived a life that was beyond himself. Toby Keith has a song, I want to talk about me. Well, that seems to be everybody these days. And yet that was not the legacy of Ralph Johnson. And so as this ship sets sail, we wish each of one of its members the best as you honor the life of love and sacrifice and outward focus that Ralph Johnson did. And we ask of ourselves, may we do the same. Thank you, Representative Sanford. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Tom Rice. So honored to be here with you today. You know, Ralph Johnson's team was named called Texas Pete. Will Texas Pete please stand and be recognized? tell you why I'm here today. I was getting on a plane almost two years ago, and I got to the end of the, the runway there right before you get on the plane and where you check your bag at the gate, and there was a, a lady who was very pregnant, and she had a toddler with her, and she was struggling to fold up a, 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 a stroller. And they had bumped me to first class. And I said, ma'am, you need this first class, class ticket more than I do. Please take my ticket. She said, no, I can't do that. I said, no, I would rather you have it. So she took my first class ticket. Now, you've got to understand that I pray every single day for God to put me where he needs me. So I walk back to the back of the plane where her seat was, and I get to my, to, to my seat, and there's a guy sitting there with an eye patch. And I knew right away, I had seen Cleve before, Cleve McClary, I had heard him speak, the leader of Texas Pete, but you know, I'd never really met him. I'd never really spent any time with him. So we had an hour and a half to kill. Now Cleve, if you ever get to know him, he carries around an old tattered notebook where he keeps his notes and pictures and such, and he keeps a big full-size picture on the front cover of Ralph Johnson. And Cleve told me 
He said, Tom, I, I need your help. You're in Congress. Can you help me with something? He said, they built a ship to commemorate, and the name is Ralph Johnson, to commemorate Ralph Johnson, and they're going to commission that thing in San Diego, and we need to move that thing to Charleston. So I went back and I told my staff, and we caught with the other members of the South Carolina delegation. We made a few phone calls, and we wrote a few letters, and lo and behold, here we are today. It and God amazing. So like I said, every day I pray for God to use me, put me where he needs me. So I just want you to join with me in a little part of that prayer I pray every day. God, give me clear eyes, wisdom, and strength. Use me as a tool to lift all your people. Amen. So honored to be with you. So honored to be with you, Texas Pete. Thank you, Representative Rice. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Tim Scott. Good morning to Mrs. Richards, General Neller. God bless you. God bless every single man and woman who dons the uniform to make sure that the rest of us are able to sleep well in our beds at night. God bless you. To our law enforcement officers that are all around making sure that we're safe, God bless those folks who put on those uniforms as well. I want to take us back. So much has been said that I wanted to say, so I'm not going to repeat what others have already said. I want to take us back to 1968. South Carolina has had a provocative pass on racial issues. And yet, Ralph, Henry, Johnson, Cleve, McClary, will you stand up, Cleve? An African-American man, please stay standing, and Cleve McClary, a white dude from South Carolina, found themselves in harm's way. And what is remarkable about this story is in part 1968, when our country was torn apart by racial strife and challenges and tension, and we celebrate the heroism of Ralph H. Johnson, but we need to remember the time in which it happened. Ralph finds a, a grenade, and he, without thinking, puts his body in harm's way, ending his life, but beginning a legacy that should last through eternity. That the rest of us, 50 years later, celebrate the USS Ralph Johnson, but more importantly, we should celebrate a vision that we all must embrace in this great nation. That we are better together that Ralph Johnson was willing to sacrifice his life for a cause greater than himself. It is the essence of service over self. And I am so thankful to come from a state whose truest heroes come from obscurity, but they will live eternally in our hearts, in our minds, and hopefully in our actions. Let us embrace the concept of Matthew 22, 37 through 39. The second part is to love our neighbors as ourselves. May God truly enrich our lives with the memory and the actions of Ralph Henry Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Scott. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Helen Richards.
Will the Johnson family and friends please stand? Thank you. I would like to take this moment and introduce someone I hold so special to my heart because of her late husband, the late Walter Bud Fulda. He was the force and the person first put Ralph Henry Johnson name out there so the world, the state of South Carolina will know who Ralph is by getting his name on the Veteran Administration Hospital that sits between B and Courtney Street. Mrs. Fulda, would you please stand and wave your hand and your daughter, Ellen. Thank you. Ralph, leave a pattern for the girls. The boys didn't follow. He has two grand nieces and a niece, and a niece that's already retired. Darian Johnson, would you please stand? Darian. Darian is a student at the Air Force Academy. She will be graduating in May. I know Ralph will be looking forward to your graduation. Zaria Johnson, would you please stand? Zaria is a private first class in the United States Army. She's stationed in Texas. Master Sergeant Brandon Alston, would you please stand? Brandon is stationed in Georgia at Robbins Air Force Base. Elaine Denise Johnson Jones, retired United States Air Force. Thank you. Many thanks go to one who had a part in making the USS Ralph Johnson a reality. First of all, let me give sincere appreciation and thanks to our sponsor, Mrs. George Ann McRaven, her husband, retired Admiral McRaven, and her family. Thank you. The Navy League, I want to thank you because you were a great part of this. Mayor Tecklenburg, Mrs. Tecklenburg, the city of Charleston, thank you so much. <laughs> Congressman Mark Sanford, I want to thank you. Senator Tim Scott, Thank you. Taylor Scarden. Taylor and I didn't see eye to eye always in our meeting, but we remain friends. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> the Commissioning Committee, Huntington English Industries, McKean Defense, both the companies and individual sponsors. Thank you. Mrs. Patterson, Commander Patterson, we thank you in the boys. Commander Patterson is one of the greatest commander and he will be truly blessed because the USS Ralph Johnson is blessed. The USS 
Ralph Johnson will be blessed because the Johnson family is a praying family. Friends and family, we can't say thank you enough, but the staff and the crew, the USS Johnson, and lastly, to my daughter Elaine Jones and Jones, I'm always inspired by your love and your kindness. Thank you. It was stated that the crew takes on the spirit of the namesake, which I personally witnessed upon the embarkment of the Johnson on Monday, March 19th, after its arrival at the Charleston Pier. Everyone that I have spoken with shared this feelings. On behalf of the Johnson family, we are both inspired and forever grateful for the generosity of love shown toward us. We would not only have our family in the Johnson crew, but our family will always forever live in the bow of this vessel. Ralph ultimately dream was to wear the uniform of the United States Marine Corps. Semper Fidelis Ralph was only 18 when he joined and went to Vietnam. Even though I strongly objected because he had an older sibling in the country, I knew he had to fulfill his dream. Follow his heart desire. Now I can tell what was going through Ralph's mind when he decided to lunge his body upon the, the grenade. But I would like to think that he thought of his fellow Marines, their wives, and their children they would leave behind. Ralph was my younger brother. He was both giving and a generous person which demonstrates daily with the life that he lived. I can remember Ralph in the neighborhood carrying elderly grocery, asking them if they need help with anything around their homes. He would give the shirt off his back if someone needed it. Your thoughts, so I believe, was only natural for him to give his life which concedes with John 15, 13. No love is greater. Love has a man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. He read his Bible daily. Just as Ralph is in heaven praying for the crew, my family and I will be praying for you as well. In closing, I wish you fair winds, follows the sea. Would you read this for me? I wish you fair winds and following seas, which implies that USS Ralph Johnson will have good winds and not to have to pound into the waves. God be with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Richards. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable James Gertz, Thanks, XO. What a great day for Charleston, a great day for our Navy and Marine Corps, and a great day for America. Senator and Representatives, General Neller, 
family members and friends of Private First Class Ralph Johnson, Medal of Honor winner Livingston, our ship sponsor George Ann McRaven, Admiral McRaven and his family, to all those other distinguished guests, fellow veterans, mayor, crew and family, good morning. As a native of Charleston and the son of a submarine officer who sailed in and out of this harbor almost 50 years ago, it's a special treat for me to be back here with you representing Richard Spencer, the Secretary of the Navy. George Ann, it's a distinct pleasure to see you again after serving with you for so many years. Uh, you've been a great support to our military and our families, uh, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. To Ralph's family and his teammates, uh, thanks for making a wonderful day a truly remarkable day. You've given us all a gift. Thank you very much. Thank you, Captain Taylor Scarden and the commissioning crew. Your hard work to arrange today's events have taken a ship in construction and helped us transform it into a warship. Thousands of skilled American workers throughout the country and the Gulf Coast at suppliers around the world have helped bring this ship to life. It's your talent, dedication, attention to quality and teamwork that enables us to deliver this lethal platform to the fleet. You created the symbol of power and diplomacy that makes us all proud to be Americans. Thank you, we're proud of you. The partnership between our Navy, our industry, our Congress, the support of the American people together delivered the Ralph Johnson to the fleet on time and within budget. It's this partnership that's made our shipbuilding enterprise so strong and such a productive force for our national security. The USS Ralph Johnson joins the fleet with unmatched lethality in the newest missile defense technologies. As the second ship to be built from the ground up with both air and missile defense, the ship brings capabilities that will enable her crew to succeed in our toughest war fights. These improvements are a fine example of innovation to drive lethality and agility. So go forth, Ralph Johnson crew, and sail the seas. Sail them with the spirit of the name you bear, a name that's of selfless service, devoted, devoted to defending and protecting our great nation. I'm confident our nation's newest destroyer in the Ralph Johnson crew. Together, you'll keep our military strong and our nation safe, just like its legacy. Private First Class, Ralph Johnson. With the support of the great state of South Carolina, the American people, and the shipbuilding enterprise, this crew will join the greatest naval force in the world and will be unmatched as they compete, deter, and win. God bless the USS Ralph Johnson, our military and their families, and the United States of America. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce today's keynote speaker, the 37th Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Robert Neller. Okay, I'm the keynote speaker, which means I'm supposed to talk the longest. It's really cold up here. And the sun just came out, so Reverend, well done. But we're in the shade. But I will be brief. 50 years and 19 days ago, A young black man from this city lost his life in a place halfway around the world as a U.S. Marine. And I think Senator Scott did a great job of trying to put it in context at the time of what was going on in the nation at the time. I mean, it's a really an amazing story. And it's not lost on me that we're here today in, in Rolf Johnson's hometown. They were minutes from his home on Coming Street, from his elementary school at Courtney, and junior high at Simonton, and the church he attended, St. Philip's AME Church, and all those seemingly ordinary places in your hometown that make us all the way we are. And among the people who had an impact on Rolf as he grew in are here today. His family, members of the church, his sister. And I've been to a few of these ceremonies and it's, to me it's really special that we get to do this in the hometown of the individual that we're honoring today. 
by name in this ship. And it's a reminder to all of us who wear this uniform that we could not do what we do without the support of our citizens and our nation. So to the Johnson family, Miss Helen, thank you very much. Thank you for adopting the crew. I'll take some of your prayers too, if you don't mind. We'll all take your prayers and thank you for being good, God-fearing people. Texas Pete's been wrecking now. Let me just say this. I sp spent some time last night with the, the Marines of that unit, 1st Recon Battalion. And I'll just say this to all the people here wearing a uniform today. So we go to the airport, we walk around, and people say, thank you for your service. And it seems like, you know, we should expect that. But I'll just say the only reason that's happened is because of all the Vietnam vets who came home and didn't get that. So even though these guys, they're a little scruffy looking down here, and they're a little older, they're still really ornery though. And I'd be careful if you see them at a bar late at night. But we all need to get out on our knees and thank our Vietnam vets. To the city of Charleston, to the mayor, thank you very much for welcoming and adopting this ship. And I think it's great that you brought the commissioning here to this great city. To the crew and to the captain, I would encourage you to tell the story of not just Ralph Johnson, but all those who served with him. Because as has been said, the spirit of the namesake of this ship has got to permeate the skin, the hull of the ship as they go forth in harm's way. This ship was designed to fight. It can help people, it can rescue people, but it's here to defend the nation. It's here to go fast and in harm's way. And that's what we expect. So in closing, I want to tell you a story. And I think it's apropos because it's a little bit about a man like Ralph Johnson. I'd been in Iraq for a year and I was doing an interview the night before I was going to go home and I was really tired and I knew the reporter and she asked me a really hard question. She said, what would you tell the people who lost their loved ones in this fight? And I didn't have a good answer. I think he said something like, I'd tell them they did their duty. But later on, I, I recanted, I was upset about that because it really was not a, a good enough answer. We all do our duty. Rolf Johnson did his duty. But I think the thing we need to remember is, with all that goes on in this nation and all sometimes the bickering and the things that go on, I've never been anywhere in the world where I've never met people that are citizens of other nations where when I asked them, they didn't say when asked where they wanted to live, it was here. It's here in the United States. And as long as we have citizens like Rolf Johnson who are willing to stand up, take an oath to wear the cloth of the nation, to defend it, and if required, if required, make the ultimate sacrifice, we're going to be just fine. We're going to be just fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Neller. Secretary Gertz, I'd be honored if you now place Ralph Johnson in commission. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, I hereby place the United States ship Ralph Johnson in commission. May God bless and guide this warship 
and all who shall sail on her. Thank you, Secretary Gertz. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's company, attend. Hup. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast, forecastle, and fantail as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying over USS Ralph Johnson. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders from Commander Navy Military Personnel Command to Commander Jason P. Patterson, United States Navy. Subject, Buper's Order Number 1298 of January 2015. When directed by a reporting senior, detach from present duty and report to pre-commissioning unit Ralph Johnson as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Ralph Johnson, report for command or report for duty as commanding officer. Vice Admiral Moore, United States ship Ralph Johnson is in commission and I am in command. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Off to the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The, off the officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and, while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are pleased to have PFC Ralph Johnson's Texas Pete teammate, PFC Alvix Colvin, in attendance. PFC Colvin will pass the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Ensign Michael Perry, from Eva Beach, Hawaii. The petty officer of the watch is Yeoman First Class Brittany Law from Waukegan, Illinois. The messenger of the watch is Fire Controlman Second Class Quinton Tufts from San Diego, California. And the bosun's mate of the watch is Chief Bosun's mate TJ Kendall from El Cajon, California. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor, Mrs. Georgianne McRaven, here with us today. Georgianne christened this ship in Pascagoula, Mississippi in April 2016. George and I'd be honored if you join me and give the order to man our ship and bring it to life. Good morning. It has been the greatest honor of my life to be the sponsor of the USS Ralph Johnson. I want to give special thanks to Helen Richards for bringing Ralph's incredible faith and goodness to the life of all of us. He is a true inspiration and his memory will live on with all the sailors of USS Ralph Johnson now and for as long as the ship sails the mighty oceans. To the men and women of the USS Ralph Johnson, thank you for your incredible strength, courage, and dedication to our great country. Thank you for all the sacrifices you and your families make to keep our country safe. Never underestimate how much your service means to our nation. 
It was an absolute joy getting to know all of you while Kelly and I sailed with you from Mayport to Charleston. You and your families will be in our thoughts and prayers every day. Please know wherever you are in the world, no matter how far away you are, the McRaven family will be praying for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. Officers and crew of USS Ralph Johnson, man our ship and bring her to life.
Yes, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of Ret USS Ralph Johnson salutes you. We are proud to serve in your great Navy. Ship's company, ready to. Will the guests please be seated? Captain. USS Ralph Johnson is manned and ready. Very well. Rear Admiral Wilson, USS Ralph Johnson is manned and ready and reports for duty. Very well. <laughs> General Neller, request permission to break your flag, sir. Executive officer, break the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Commandant of the Marine Corps is flying over USS Ralph Johnson. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Jason Patterson, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Ralph Johnson. Ship's Company, Parade, rest. Senator Scott, Congressman Sanford, Congressman Rice, Mayor Tecklenburg, General Neller, Admirals Moore, Galinas, Wilson, Secretary Gertz, the Texas Pete Marines, our ship sponsor, Mrs. Georgian McRaven, friends, families, and guests, and last but certainly not least, the Johnson family. I want to extend a warm and gracious thank you to the city of Charleston for welcoming us to your wonderful city. The anticipation of our arrival and the outpouring of support this week has been simply amazing. Mayor Tecklenburg, I extend my appreciation to you and your community for making today possible. The Low Country has arrived in full force to recognize one of your own. I've said this many times, the city of Charleston has always been the right place to commission this ship. Tomorrow is National Medal of Honor Day and today we are here to commission a ship named after a recipient of our nation's highest military honor. I wanna take a brief moment to recognize another Medal of Honor recipient in the audience today, General Jim Livingston, United States Marine Corps. Thank you for your service, sir, and being an example of heroism and the, for the next generation of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines that serve today. The journey to today's commissioning started over four years ago in September 13, when our sponsor, Mrs. Georgian McRaven, started the production line by cutting the first piece of steel at Huntington Eagles Shipbuilding. She later christened the ship in Pascagoula, Mississippi on April 2nd, 2016. We were fortunate to have her underway last week, as she said, uh, for the transit into Charleston Harbor, and I can report with authority she now has her sea legs. Georgian, thank you for your generosity in being a part of this ship and her crew. We're lucky to have you. This Arleigh Burke class destroyer in front of you is the most lethal and advanced warship ever to set sail on the high seas. Its capability brings the forward presence and the fight to the shores of the enemies. This Greyhound is fast and powerful, and it represents the fighting spirit of her namesake, Private First Class Ralph Johnson. Yet a ship is nothing without her crew. 
And I want to take a moment to brag about the 315 sailors that stand in front of you. These sailors are the finest example that our nation has to offer today. They are sons and daughters, mothers and fathers that have sacrificed so much time away from their loved ones to bring this ship to life. This crew took charge of their ship and made it their own. And I'm immensely proud to sail with them all. And to our crew's families, thank you for the support of your loved ones. Throughout the many months away from home, it was the spouses and the children with the resilience and strength to manage throughout the long period of separation. It's the hardest job in the Navy, and I want to take a moment to recognize them today. So if all the spouses and their children would please stand and we give them a round of applause. When I received this assignment as a prospective commanding officer of this ship, I did what most sailors do by reading the story of the ship's namesake. I was immediately struck by the sense of honor and duty that Ralph had at such a young age. Much has been said today about the heroism that Ralph demonstrated on top of Hill 146, but for me personally, bringing this ship to life has given me the immeasurable privilege of getting to know about the type of man he was through meeting his family. He was a man of faith, that always put others in front of himself. He did this as a child with his brothers and sisters, and he did it on the night of Mar or in the early morning of March 5, 1968, for his teammates on, on Hill 146. Just like Ralph did for those around him, this crew takes care of each other, and the ship will take care of us. That is the story I will carry with me for the rest of my life. To Mrs. Helen Richards and the entire Johnson family, thank you for trusting us with the legacy of your, of your brother and your uncle. We will sail this ship proudly across the world, bearing the name and spirit of Ralph Johnson. Helen, you've said to me that the crew is now part of your family. I can't tell you how much of an impact that has made to me and this crew. We'll make you proud. I personally owe a debt of gratitude to my former shipmates, mentors, friends, and family that have come from all over the country to Stephen Connie, thank you for letting me take your beautiful daughter over 18 years ago on this adventure. To my brothers and their family, we don't get to see each other enough, but when the Patterson boys get to, big, get, to get, get back together, we always have a great time. Mom and Dad, thank you for your love and support throughout my life, and it means a lot to have you here, Dad. It means a lot. To my two boys, Cooper and Chase, I'm so proud of you both. Being your dad is the best thing I've ever done. And finally, to my wife, Cassie, you are the foundation of our family. None of this works without you. And I'm the luckiest guy in the world to have you by my side. I love you. So once again, I want to thank you all for joining us on our special day. May God bless you and bless the sailors and the Marines of the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps. And may God bless America. Ship's Company, a 10 hook. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for a final tribute to our ship's namesake, Private First Class, Class Ralph Johnson, by the playing of the Marines' hymn followed by the benediction, which will be offered by Chaplain Beadog.
Let us pray. Dear God, the men and women of the USS Ralph Johnson represent some of the best and toughest 21st century seagoing sailors. They will soon depart from the friendly shores of Charleston to an unhospitable elements at sea. When faced by the enemies, may these trained sea warriors will confront their opponents the same courage that Private First Class Johnson demonstrated. Seller, Selens, Mortalis, swift, silent, deadly. While at sea, plying the ocean routes of the world, the sailors on board Johnson will observe your power in action and your impressive works on the deepest seas. When they cry in their trouble, Lord, help and save them from their distress. May you calm the storm to a whisper and still the waves. May you bring them back safely into their harbor and to their families. And as we depart from this historic ceremony, help us, O oh Lord, to continue on reflecting on your goodness and always remember the invaluable lesson learned from the life of our hero, Private First Class Johnson. May we never forget our responsibilities in the pursuit of peace. Help us to remain truthful and faithful as declared in the Marine Corps motto, Semper Fidelis, always faithful to the Navy, to the Corps, our beloved country, always faithful to the cause of defending our freedom, our faith and family. And now help us, O Lord, to always abide with the principle of our core values, honor, courage, and commitment. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show his favor and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Viadog. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated for the departure of our platform guests. <laughs> 